Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome back to the Onyx Tavern Vlog series on Shuriken Sentai Ni Ninja. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, and today we're going to be talking about Shinobi Number 2, Become the Last Ninja. Now, before we actually talk about Shinobi Number 2, I need to make a correction about Shinobi Number 1. Because of the translations that I got um, when I first reviewed it, and I don't know where I got the translations or who actually subbed them, um, it, I, I got information wrong. I had stated that our main antagonist, who've, who's really yet to reveal himself at this point, made a deal with a demon or a devil back in the Warring States era in order to conquer Japan. Well, that's not exactly what happened. What happened was is that he was sealed away by the ninja clan and he made a prophecy that he would return. And then when he did return, because this is actually his second attempt, when he returned the first time, he became an oni, or a demon, if you will. So the implication is, is that he did not make a deal with the devil or anything, but that he had some sort of dark magic and powers of his own in which he was able to, to do this while he was sealed away by the ninjas. Uh, now, that doesn't mean he didn't make a deal with the devil, maybe uh, revealed later on in the series, but that is not what happened, and I apologize for, for, for that. Because, uh, again, the subs just weren't as good. And when I went back and watched on TV Nihon subs, I see where I made the problems, and I want to go ahead and make that correction. Uh, along with that, I need to point out that I will not be doing a vlog on Ni Ninja until after the TV Nihon subs come out because I don't want to make those mistakes again, and TV Nihon has an amazing track record, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick with those guys. So, that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Now, with that out of the way, let's actually go ahead and talk about uh, today's episode, Shinobi number 2, and... I'm kind of mixed on this episode on a number of levels. For one, it's, you know, got good action set pieces. Uh, we get some insights into some characters. There's some comedy and all that. But the thing is, is that it is a character story on our uh, owl ninja, uh, Yakumo. Now, as I say in the first one, translation or no, I did not like Yakumo. I didn't think he was... Uh, a very interesting character. I thought he was too arrogant. He was kind of too stuck up and all that. And while this episode talks about that, it doesn't really do anything to make me like him more as a character. So here's what here's what the overall uh, episode is. Um, they they find out grandfather is not is not dead. That he's alive, uh, and then he takes them to their new dojo, basically, where he is going to help teach them along with his son about how to be a ninja because they lack in skill as you know what we find out uh in the episode because a lot of them are just not really good at what they do um so they're all going to go ahead and learn how to be ninjas there's some classroom work there's some field activities and all that kind of stuff it actually seems like a uh like a reasonable thing to go ahead and do far too often you get these shows where they just happen to know all the powers or the the training is implied or they've already got the training now it seems like we're going to go through a little bit more of that because it is established they learned uh ninja abilities throughout their childhood some of them really haven't kept up with them or cared about them. Now we're going to get kind of back to basics. It's like that guy who maybe did ninjutsu or, or karate when he was in, you know, fifth, sixth grade, got out of it for a while, and now he's in college. He's taken it as an extra credit and just got to relearn everything. That's kind of what, what's happening right here. Um, but again, the episode is uh, about uh, Yakumo and... How he basically has a rivalry now with our Red Ranger, uh, Takahuru. And what happens is, okay, so they go training, is what's happening. And all of our Ninja Ninjas really suck at this new uh, Shuriken device that they got. Where they can control fire, metal, water, so forth. And throughout the training, and I feel bad for this, but Fuka really gets, she gets beaten up in this episode. Because she has become the punching bag. She is the Megan Griffin of Nin Ninja. Because every time they try something, it backfires and it hurts her. You know, you put it on the, the wind setting, it blows her away. You put it on the water setting, she gets splashed with a bucket of water. You put it on the gold pot setting, 
which is a setting now, a, a gold pot falls on her head. So I feel really bad for her, but she's got good comedic timing, I think. So I, I just hate it for B, the rest of the series that we just kind of pick on her, which is, again, what happens to Meg Griffin. But uh, it was it was, it was was nice to see that it was the girl again, the comedic uh, thing here, as opposed to one of our male characters. Uh, anyway, so it's revealed uh, that Yukumo... He's having an easy time with his ninja abilities, and that's because he really does know magic. Uh, I actually know uh, of a couple of people who comment on the previous video saying that while Yakumo was in England, he was learning magic in terms of prestidigitation. That's what they believed he, he was learning. But this episode reveals... It looks like he really did go to Hogwarts because not only does he actually say that he learned magic and by comparison, this ninja magic is a lot easier, but he actually brings out a magic wand and does stuff with it. A little odd, uh, I have to go ahead and admit, and I do wonder if they are going to have him use his separate magic later on in the series as, composed, as opposed to ninja magic, which I briefly want to go ahead and point out uh, a little thing that I'm disturbed by in this series, because from the pre-production material, it really stated that they were going to work more on more physical action, wire work, kind of make it like an older Sentai without heavy reliance on CG. Thus far in two episodes, there seems to be something of a balance of maybe 60-40, 60% CG, 40% physical stuff. And, and I'm not really liking that too much, and I thought, you know, hey, maybe they'll actually do more physical set pieces and practical effects later on. But what's implied in this episode, at least through the use of the grandfather's abilities, is that what they're doing is not real ninja techniques, but is real magic. Now, we have this idea in our head that, that ninjas are magical. They throw a smoke palette and they magically disappear. You don't know where they go. Well, the thing is, that's actually an illusion. They throw a smoke palette, you become disoriented, you don't know where they go, and they just run out of there really quick. In this case, it looks like they're, they are magically disappearing. That instead of using practical ninja effects, it is magic. There's a scene where the grandfather multiplies himself and confuses everybody as to which one is actually him. Historically, I don't think there's been any ninja that has actually ever done that. And I am a little upset that we are going that direction as opposed to practical effects because that gives us the ability to do these... CG bits of walking on water, magically disappearing, flying in, all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, this is a universe where magic does exist. It, it exists in, you know, again, the form of Magi Ranger and everything else that we've seen within the series. I just wish they would have taken a more um, grounded approach, if you will, uh, to this whole to to this whole magic thing. And I also want to point out that they do also make another good point uh, in the series. Uh, if anybody follows Gaijin Goomba, he actually did a video about what a true ninja is and compared it to video game ninjas, if they really are ninjas or not. And one of the things about ninjas is that they remain hidden in the shadows. The whole point is they're assassins and you, they, they don't see you coming, That's why, or you don't see them coming. That's why they wear black and so forth. But in this episode and the previous, it is mentioned that we are the ninjas who do not hide. So... While it may not be what really should be happening and all that, at least there's a brief explanation saying, yeah, Ninja's high, but we don't care about that. We're just going to be up there in the open. So that that's good to have in there. But let's get back to uh, Yukumo. So basically what, what we learn about him is that he doesn't really want to be involved in all of this. He thinks that the whole ninja thing is a thing of the past that the world has moved on from ninjas i mean again the grandfather is the last ninja and that there's a bigger world out there and, and that's great because again we've had you know alien invasions a dozen or so times within this universe uh and again to him ninjas are just old hat old fashioned and the thing is is that in, in addition to this he doesn't want to do it but he knows that he has been born into a family of ninjas, and thus he has some sort of obligation to do this. 
it's not a matter of if I don't do it, there's nobody else that can go ahead and do it, but I was born into this and I have this responsibility. I, I don't see the appeal of it. I don't like it, but I know I have to go ahead and do it. And that might open up, I think, later on in the series, a discussion of is it fair for the grandfather to put this burden on his grandchildren that because he was because the grandfather and his ancestors were not able to defeat our villain and seal him properly or prevent him from ever getting out or in some cases even destroy him that they put this burden on their children and now they are suffering the repercussions because i can really see um yakumo at least at this point confronting his grandfather later in the series pointing out I didn't want to be a part of this, and now look what happened. Whatever that situation is, and kind of blaming his grandfather on that. So, I can see they're, they're laying the seeds of that, I think, of that idea that is not fair that we should be involved in this just because you couldn't get the job done, or just because we happen to be born into this family. Because they really have no say or right into it. They're just like, well, we're going to do it. I'm sure they could go ahead and walk away, but I think all of them have this sense of duty that it is something we should be doing. Not to mention... um, in comparison to his cousin, uh, Takahuru really believes in the legends of his grandfather, of all the things that he'd done. Like, he was talking about how he fought off 30 pandas, how he communicated with aliens, how he uh, fought off giant snakes, um, and how he can eat a giant goza in, thir- in less than 30 minutes. Uh, things like that, you know, these kind of living legends. I mean, Takahuru Huru really believes in his grandfather, really loves this kind of ninja thing, because he's spent his whole life uh, around these legends. Now, of course, uh, Yakumo's kind of like, you got to grow up. Uh, you know, grow up, don't believe in these fairy tales and all that kind of stuff. And he really doubts the things that Grandpa has done. To which I'm wondering, again, if this was a more grounded series where they were doing more practical ninja stuff, then I would believe that line, but with the use of the magic, and we know in this series where there have been alien invasions and giant snakes and all these other kind of things, I find it kind of odd that Yukumo would be in doubt that his father make contact with 30 alien species when that has likely happened, given that aliens are among us all the time uh, in Super Sentai. So it's kind of an odd uh, statement for him to, to go ahead and make. But he's trying to make it like, I am above this uh child these these childish endeavors these uh, childish beliefs and dreams and he's really kind of separating himself from the others because of that in a way i would almost look at this as maybe a sixth ranger kind of thing but this is you know he's our uh, yakumu is our foil on the team he is now the rival of our red ranger and they actually develop a rivalry within the within the show where Yakumo, as I understand it, and the way I interpret it, is that the only reason he's going to stay now and do this is because he wants to prove that he is better than uh, Tuk- uh, Takahuru. That he wants to say, that I will become better than you and I will surpass grandfather, I will go ahead and show you. To where it's now become a friendly rivalry and competition amongst the two. So I really like uh, that that's what they're, what they're doing here. I also like that visually they've been able to separate Yakumo from the others. And this was really brilliant. When I first saw it, I was confused. And then when I learned in the episode more about his character, I was like, this is brilliant. So right after we come back from the opening title sequence, we see all of them sitting down, learning from uh, the father on how to you know, be ninja, reading their books and stuff like that. Now, our four, four rangers are sitting down, you know, on, on pillows with desks near the floor, like a traditional Japanese, uh, you know, like something you'd see in a samurai movie or something. But Yakumo is in the back of the classroom in a de- uh, desk, desk chair. And I, and I thought, why is he doing this? They just ran out of chairs or something. But when you look at I mean, the desk chair, that's what they use today in colleges in Japan. I used one while I was over there. Nobody sits on the floor like that to go ahead and learn. Not, not that I'm aware of. But... It's showing that the other four rangers believe in this world of mysticism and ninjas and this old practice way. Whereas Yukumo, he's like separating himself to where 
this is the future. This is what we're doing currently. I'm not going to sit on the floor like one of our idiot ancestors or something. This is how you sit in, in a classroom now. Th this is what you need to go ahead and do. And I thought that was a brilliant way of showing it. And they didn't even say anything about it, which is great. Because that's, again, that's how, what you do in the medium uh, of film and television. Show, don't tell. So I think that was a, a great way to, to get that point across. Um, we get a little bit more, uh, from our Momo Ranger, Katsumi. Basically, she, she seems to be, I, I thought of her, when you look at her in the first episode, and then you look at her in the opening title credits, she seems to be as kind of like airhead, like, like, oh my god, uh, you know, kind of, uh, feel to her, but... She seems to have some sort of wisdom to her. Um, y Yakumo basically says that she has like poison tipped words and all that. And um, I don't know if it's passive aggressism or whatever you want to go ahead and call it. But she basically shakes Yakumo out of his complacency to confront what he doesn't want to go ahead and confront. Basically, there's a great scene with both of them talking uh, by the river. But beyond that, we don't know much kind of, uh, kind of about her. Uh, and I really like to know more about our female characters because, I mean, it's easy to write our male characters. A lot of these guys are, are stock and all that. But I want to know more about Shiro and Momo. I want to see uh, what we get out of these girls um, into the future. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I think everything else is kind of by the numbers. We have uh, the monster. We have the new Megazord combination. Um... Yeah, so so nothing really significant in that in those terms, but um, again, I think it was uh, good to get Yukumu out there to get to know about him. I'm hoping that next few episodes we'll learn about more of the characters. And you know, I really want to know who our villain is. I want to know his exact motivations, and I hope by the next episode that our villain will confront our heroes. Uh, we'll talk about them uh, a little bit more and find out. You know, what's this all about? Does he just want to rule Japan through fear or or what? What's what's kind of the big deal going on here? So that's all I got. Um, I want to thank you guys for listening. Leave your comments on what you thought about this episode. And until next time, the tavern is now closed.